I'm going to take some pure black here for some of the darkest areas of his ear. And remember, this is just a very loose beginning. I'm going to go back in later and, and lift out some of this, um, which I'll show you how to do that. doesn't look like much right now, um, but it will. Um, while the paper is still wet, I'm going to go over here and get some medium soft edges. The, the, the paper is wet enough that it's holding some of the brush stroke, uh, or dry enough that it's holding some of the brush stroke, but also wet enough that it's kind of softening it, which is, I don't want any hard edges at this point. The time to put in some hard edges is towards the end when you can kind of see what you've got and you know exactly where you want those hard edges. But at the beginning stages of the painting, it is the time to be putting in your softer edges. Now here around the eye, I um, didn't get the eye wet so that I could paint around the eye very carefully. Because that's, at least for my style of painting, what I do is I really like to focus on the eye. So I keep that area, real, I keep the eye dry, but the area around it can get wet so that you can put in soft washes around it. And we'll see how this looks when it dries, hopefully. Some of this area won't need. I won't need to go back in over it. Um, now I'm picking up some paint with my brush that's a little bit thicker to put in some of these contours while it's still wet, so it all kind of blends together nicely. One of the secrets to getting your paintings to look somewhat professional is to have a nice balance of soft and hard edges, and of course you want the softer edges where there's um, the focus is not going to be as strong. You want the soft edges to be in the areas of the painting that are kind of resting places for the eye before the eye goes back to the detail areas. So you can see right here where I put the eye, there's a hard edge and around the eye is soft. So. That adds interest too. To have contrast adds interest. So having soft and hard edges does add some interest. Now my paper is starting to dry out, so um, it's still pretty wet up here. Some parts of the paper will dry faster than others. I got a little too much paint that I wanted. I got it a little too soft, so I'm going to try to put some water in here while it's still wet and see how that's driving that paint down. Because this, in the picture, this is more white coming into the black. So, if you have a semi moist area of paint um, and you want to get some color to move out of that area, you can kind of flood that area with water and it'll move the paint. See, I'm putting, you can see how that's moved that paint. So, and when you do this, it's kind of hard to completely control the results, but sometimes in watercolor that's what you're going for anyway, so I'm going to wet this over here and give the ear more definition and kind of push that color back over here too and I'm going to get all this wet so that it kind of moves back over. I'm gonna put something under my thing and that way it'll tilt it back so this color will come this way. Um, and this is an area that I kind of, this is the leg, so I'm going to put some more water 
I'm just putting some water in these areas to push that back. So I'm at a point now where I need to let it dry and we'll see what we get.